Well, I gotta get this lawnmower deck off today, get the snow blade on, see if the old girl will start. Hey, welcome back to Hoosier Helpers. Today we got a really quick, fun episode. We're gonna actually be installing this block heater in the G1800. This is the same block heater that would be used in the BX2660 uh, if I wanted to put one in it. But this D722 engine that's in my G1800, because I upgraded it, is the same engine that's in the BX1800. So it's, a, it's an 18 horse diesel engine. And uh, they're just hard to start. They don't like cold weather. Much, much more, temperamental than my BX2660 for sure. So while in Kansas over Thanksgiving, I went to Roman's Outdoor Power and Equipment, my favorite Kubota dealer in the US, and ordered this 7, 000, or 70, 75 uh, block heater. It should be the same block heater the BX would use. We're gonna go through the process of installing it. If you don't have a G1800 or if you have another one of the Kubota tractors, it's gonna be the same process. So don't worry about it. The only thing that we're gonna need is some new coolant and then I'll be installing a uh, block heater in it. So hope you enjoy, thanks. All right, so it's been charging for about an hour. It was showing that it was green, so I don't know what that means, but I put it on boost. We're gonna give it another shot here. So you can see, even with a really hot battery, this thing is cold blooded. I'm gonna let her preheat a little bit longer. All right, now that we got it nice and cold in the garage again here, go ahead and get that battery pulled out. We'll get it started cleaning. I'll show you here what I'm talking about. So this battery obviously sets in front of the engine, a lot of heat here, and it likes to boil over. So you see all that stuff there, that's all battery acid related crap. So that all needs to be cleaned off because it is dropping voltage from the negative to the positive through that. So anyway, we'll pull the battery out, clean it up good. That way the winter it doesn't this charge, and then we gotta take the deck off as well because it's time to put the snow blade on, and then I'll be putting in a, that block heater. And I'll, and that's as good time as any. If you're not subscribed to our channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, my thought on what I'm gonna give away is a pair of CT pliers. CT by Crescent, it's the number one plier on the market. We use these as farmers all the time growing up. CTs were the only pliers in our holsters. So for our 1,000 subscriber giveaway, we're gonna give away a pair of CT pliers and a holster. So look forward to that. Still got a long ways to go. It might take another year, but we'll get there. All right, so I did a little confirming on the internet. I just looked up G1900, because this is technically the same engine as G1900. And then I looked up block heater installation. I found one Tractors by Net uh, blog feed where a guy actually listed out the instructions that he had. It said drain water, which obviously, yeah, we got to drain the water. And it said remove uh, freeze plug in cylinder head at front of engine. Well, this is the front of the engine as it sets in the machine, but it's the back of the engine traditionally because this is the, the crankshaft output. This and just like the BX's, the engine sets in there backwards. Um, so I believe this is the right freeze plug. It appears to be the right size. In addition, there's no freeze plugs up in the front because you have a water pump and that's about it. Uh, you can't get into the, the, the actual front side of that cylinder head. So I believe that's the right one. I did confirm again that that is the right freeze plug for this tractor. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and drain the water to do that. Got the, the tractor jacked up a bit here. I've got a, a trash can basically underneath it. And I'm gonna pull the lower radiator hose off of the engine block. The main thing I wanna do is I wanna drain most of the water anyway, as much as I can, because I wanna change the coolant out. It's been, it's been plenty of time and it's time for a coolant change in it. So uh, the coolant that I put in this was a multi-purpose or uh, a flexible coolant. It could go in either color of coolant 
and uh, in addition it was extended life for diesel engines and so this go around I'm actually putting orange in it um, it is the Prestone Dex Cool so uh, but it's approved for diesel engines so it should work fine got to get in here to get this lower radiator hose pulled off the engine block I'm not pulling the cap yet because I'd like to try to evacuate any coolant that's in this tank and by creating a negative pressure it should suck up as the the tank drain or as the engine drains let's see how easy it is to get this radiator hose off I installed it new when I put this engine in and we'll see how easy it wants to come off of that nipple Well, we got one other thing we can try. I'm not getting good luck with that. I don't want to tear up the hose because they're not too cheap. And what I'm going to try is there's a petcock right in here. And I don't know if you can see it. The lighting's really bad. But you can open it. And I replaced it when I put this engine in because the old one was seized. But you should be able to pull it out and drain the fluid at least out of the radiator and then we'll try to get the block drained as well maybe there's a block drain somewhere well we made a huge ass mess but let's talk about what a freeze plug is a freeze plug is an area that they plug with a soft malleable steel plug it's not intended for protecting the engine from freezing it'll pop out when it, if it does freeze the intent of a freeze plug is that is a casting inclusion that allowed them to get the sand out of the casting so you're supposed to be able to get on the edge of one drive it in and then get a hold of it and pull it on out now I'm watching to make sure I don't drive that whole thing in yeah there so you can see it just turned on me and that turning action will allow me to get a hold of it with a pair of pliers and hopefully extract it all right again we got the CT pliers here absolutely the best pliers if it'll focus on them best pliers on the market if you're looking for a slip joint pair of pliers these things are excellent this is a long handled pair they got shorter handles as well but i like the long handle for the leverage and i'm gonna try to get this thing positioned so i can pry it out of there actually coming out pretty easy I think I'm kind of rotating it there it goes interesting so when I installed this engine there's some grit on there but I used pre-mixed coolant so that's interesting that there's some buildup there um, clean out that water jacket just a bit all right so this block heater as you can see it's simply got a, an o-ring here and it's got a little plate here and there's a little screw I'm guessing as you tighten that screw I might squish that o-ring out to tighten the fit so I'm gonna back that screw off and it's it's not uh, you know obviously this is toward the bottom this is toward the top or flip-flop it I don't know which way it goes in but there is a casting right in here so I'm guessing the heating element portion goes toward the top and it goes in sideways it goes in the sideways it looks like because if I went in straight with the heating element up it bumps a casting can't go in this way can't go in down so it has to go in sideways and still feels like it's hitting a casting in there oh. 
so we're gonna have to tap that in. I wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea to put a little lubricant on that O-ring. I would, but. I'm gonna take this bracket off. See if that won't let me get a little more room in there. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to use the screwdriver to kind of compress that O-ring to get it started into the casting. Because what it's trying to do is roll out of the groove. Once it rolls out of the groove, then that's when it's subject to cut. We're gonna just try to, so it will go in. There's a little bit of tolerance in there. So what I'm gonna try to do is modify one of these O-rings that I bought to make them a little bit, not so much smaller around, if I can snap this thing back on, then take a Dremel tool and run around that, try to make it just a little bit smaller. So as you can see, I, if the camera will focus here, um, I've got most of it done, now I'm just turning it because I couldn't get a good side where it was next to this heating element. So that looks pretty good. I took quite a bit of material off and it's pretty uniform. Try it now. Try to smush that in there. I think it's kind of started all the way around. It's still snug fit, so it should still seal. There, I finally got it in. Talk about a pain. Now the question is, is it gonna leak? Or did I damage the heating element in the installation process? The only way we're gonna find that out, is fill her up. So I did find the instructions and what you're supposed to do, get it inserted and then tighten the screw until it's firmly mounted is what it says. So I'm guessing until it's tight. And then uh, should be good to go. Let's get that power cable, which will go into here. air intake back around check for clearance yeah that should be fine and then the cord over here I'm just gonna uh, strap it to there's a wiring harness here I can strap it to uh, they sent one zip tie so we got the cord here there's a wiring harness right here I'm gonna strap it to that Okay, and that I can tuck back in there when I don't need it or have it out where I get to it. Okay, we're ready for coolant. All right, so I'm gonna put some coolant in it now and we're gonna then check for leaks and start it. We're gonna have to burp the system good. All right, we're all hooked back up with the battery. I charged it for a while. It probably could have used a little more charging, but I'm gonna put the air filter back in. At least for now, kind of temporary. On my strap. So 
what we're doing here is I got my finger in the water. I'm waiting for a warm water to start coming so I know the thermostat's open. I could just feel the hose here and feel for it, but we want to build pressure so we can check the water leaks. Well, it looks dry underneath the uh, the block heater, so that's what I really wanted to make sure is that was dry. I checked the radiator hoses over here; they weren't leaking. I never got them broke loose, so that's not going to be a concern area. The other thing is the pet cock here, and it's wet around it, but it's probably because of all the coolant that when it came when I drained it. So anyway. All right, so it's actually been 24 hours since we did the, the block heater install. After I did it yesterday, I had to go put the Christmas lights up. So the door was open, the garage got cold. And so what I wanted to do is make sure this engine was completely cold because we ran it quite a bit. You know, we brought it up to operating temperature and I wanted to have a fair to fair contest with the pre-block heater versus the post-block heater. It's been plugged in now 30 minutes. You can feel the heat coming off this engine. So that's a good sign that 30 minutes is enough. If I can feel heat coming off of it and I feel the side of the block and the block's warm, then we've got enough heat in it. So full disclosure, it's not a super fair comparison because I did charge the battery last night, but we're going to see how well it starts just with the block heater on now. So just with the glow plugs on the normal light plus about four or five seconds. I'd say that speaks for itself. It starts basically like it would in the summertime. So um, block heater definitely helped out with that. Now, you know, dead of winter, it's gonna be a little colder in here. It's about 40 degrees right now, so it's not super cold, but uh, dead of winter, It'll get down to about 30 in the garage, maybe in the upper 20s. And uh, so it'll be a little colder, but reality is that's, that's excellent. So thanks again for watching Who's Your Helpers. Please remember to hit like and subscribe. Push the little bell for notifications when we release new videos. I know they're not all that often, but thanks and have a great day. Bye.